a senior health official in Blackburn with Darwin, a borough in the northwest with one of the highest infection rates for COVID-19 in England, has warned the current test and trace system isn't working well enough. It comes as Scottish authorities are investigating whether workers at an NHS test and trace facility in North Lanarkshire have themselves become infected with coronavirus. Here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. Blackburn today, part of an area which has seen one of the biggest recent increases in coronavirus cases. It's been identified by national health officials as needing enhanced support for tackling the virus. The local council has introduced its own measures, including limiting household gatherings. I think the two metre distance is more or less gone, but that's not the council's fault. That's down to silly people, isn't it? We need to take control of the virus, you know, and um, yeah, I think, I think at the end of the day, if um, everybody just needs to obey, you know, obey the rulings. An investigation's underway at a Blackburn mosque after around 250 people attended a funeral. There's been a positive test result and the congregation contacted. Mosque leaders say there was a misunderstanding over the guidelines for a limit of 30. In communities like this, the test and trace scheme is vital. Finding people who've been in contact with those who've tested positive and telling them to self-isolate. But the local public health chief said today the national system wasn't yet effective we could risk seeing an exponential growth because up to half of the people that may have been infected by an index case, by the first case with the virus, will themselves not know they are infected or at risk of infection and get tested and self-isolate. The Department of Health said the test and trace service was working closely with local authorities in England to help manage local outbreaks and data was shared daily. In the week ending July the 8th, officials managed to get through to 78.7% .7 of those who tested positive. That was up slightly on the previous week. They were asked to give details of their recent contacts. Of those, 71.1% were reached and asked to self-isolate. That was down slightly. In total, since the scheme was launched in late May, 156,000 contacts have been traced. Speeding up test results and getting to more contacts is seen as crucial as winter approaches. Experts say this is especially important in places where infections are seen to be on the increase. There has to be very large uh, testing uh, in those areas uh, with tracing to, to be able to, to keep the epidemic uh, under control. Uh, and certainly I think that's where that, uh, if you like, rise in the uh, ability of us to test and the number of tests is incredibly important. A cluster of cases linked to a call centre has been identified at Bells Hill near Glasgow, ironically part of the testing and tracing system. Another example of the local outbreaks which health officials around the UK are striving to identify and stamp out. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Well, the new coronavirus only came to light at the end of last year, and the more scientists study it, the more they're learning about who is most at risk. Here's our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh. The risk of catching and dying with COVID-19 varies dramatically depending on your age, and roughly doubles every five to six years. Now, if we look at data for England and Wales up to the end of June, if you're over the age of 90, there was a one in 49 risk of dying with COVID-19. But just look how quickly that risk falls away the younger you are. Under the age of 45, there was a greater risk of dying in an accident during that period. And for the five to 14 year olds, the risk was one in 2.4 million. There were three COVID deaths in that age group during that period, compared to 138 from other causes. But even though the risks to the young are incredibly low, they can still pass on the infection to older and more vulnerable people. I think the figures for COVID are quite extraordinary. We know that in normal life, older people are at a greater risk of dying each year than younger people. But for COVID, the difference between the old and the young is far more extreme than in normal life. Older people might have a thousand, ten thousand times the risk of a very young person. Of course, it's not just your age that's important. Men are twice as likely to die in hospital with COVID-19 as women. People living in deprived areas are also at increased risk, as are some occupations, such as security guards, bus 
and taxi drivers. Now, even after adjusting for socio-economic factors, ethnicity plays a key role. Black and South Asian men have up to twice the risk of dying as white men, and women from these ethnic groups are also at increased danger. Then there's your overall health. Nine in 10 people who've died have had at least one underlying condition, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, or lung disease. Scientists have developed a tool to help them assess an individual's vulnerability to COVID-19. Take Peter, he's a 63-year-old white man. Now his body mass index of 37 adds five years to his COVID age, but it's his type two diabetes that has the biggest impact, adding eight years, giving him an overall COVID age of 76, which places him in a more vulnerable age group. Now, what about Mantej, who's 65? We know women are less vulnerable than men, so we can take eight years off her COVID age, but because she's of South Asian origin, we have to add four years back on, giving her an overall COVID age of 61. Now, it's not possible to give a completely personalized risk, but it's clear that sex, ethnicity, age, and overall health are key factors. Fergus Walsh, our medical correspondent, reporting there.